games based on movies get a tough time from the gaming community, and not without good reason. Despite there being plenty of examples of movie-based games turning out just fine, it's safe to say that most fail to get anywhere near their potential. Publishers like to release movie games as close to the film as possible. This makes sense, but unfortunately, it usually results in unfinished or unambitious products hitting the shelves, with an eye more towards speed than care or quality. That's the rule, however. Today we're looking at the exceptions, as it took more than one quarter of a century for the films on this list to get their first video game adaptations, and a few of them, as you'll see, took significantly longer than that. Say what you want about the quality of these games, you certainly can't say they were rushed. So silence your cell phones, enjoy some popcorn, and prepare to feel mighty old if you actually remember any of these films coming out. Or even some of the games for that matter. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 of the longest gaps between films and their first video game adaptations. But before we get started, it's time to take a break and talk about the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends! If you've heard of Raid Shadow Legends, you know it's got a ton of champions, over 600 now, but it's also got an insane variety of bosses too. Let's put one of those guys in the spotlight today. Oh, the Dark Fae. She's creepy. All the other Doom Tower bosses are huge monsters and stuff, but Astranix is... Well, she's got a good name, I'll put it that way. But let me tell you why she's a real problem. Her main trick is the doppelgangers. At the start of combat, she'll duplicate your whole team, so you'll need to be able to take out your own guys right away. That's not too hard. If you put someone super fast in who can do turn meter manipulation, you'll always go first by a hair, so you can shut your duplicates down all at once. After you take out your mirror squad, the rest of her mechanics are pretty easy to deal with, especially because she's actually quite vulnerable to turn meter manipulation herself, so you can nuke down the Dark Fae without too much worry. This month, Raid's got a non-stop schedule of special events and activities, including Forge Pass Season 3 with some amazing rewards on offer, including a limited edition artifact set. If that's not enough, Raid's bringing out some new champions, along with some awesome-looking champion skins for the incredible Madame Ceres. But wait! Here's the big news. Later this month, Raid is giving everybody's favourite champion the upgrade he deserves. Finally, Death Knight is becoming a legendary champion. It's something we've all been waiting for, and we can't wait to see how Ultimate Death Knight turns out. This is the best time to get started in Raid, and if you click the link in the description or scan our QR code here on the screen, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Aina, 200k silver, 1 energy refill and 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shine so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in-game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. And now, back to the video. Number 10, The Warriors and The Warriors, 26 years. The Warriors is a 1979 action thriller that tells the story of gang violence on the streets of New York City. In the film, the eponymous Warriors are framed for a murder and must make it through the hostile streets to their home turf. It features the likes of James Raymar and David Patrick Kelly putting in suitably edgy performances. While many beat-em-up games released in the years following the film definitely had a similar theme, it wasn't until Rockstar stepped up in 2005 that the Warriors fans were finally able to come out to play. The game was released on PS2, Xbox and PSP, bringing the film's gang-on-gang -gang violence back into the limelight. The game reviewed well, sold well, and made many players aware of the movie for the first time. It also expanded on the Warriors lore, featuring flashback missions that showed how certain members joined the gang, and putting the spotlight on other gangs that weren't featured in the film. A surprising and well-executed franchise revival then. It also makes you want to assemble the Triple Jump crew and take to the streets ourselves. Not sure what we'd actually do in the streets, maybe just take a stroll to Greg's. Sorry, we're not as tough as you probably thought we were. Number 9, Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Three Giant Monsters, 30 years. The most instantly recognisable of all the skyscraper-sized lizards in the world, Godzilla made its film debut in 1954. The monster was a destructive force brought about by careless nuclear testing, and it spawned a massive franchise that went from a bloke in a rubber suit batting at miniature buildings to advanced cutting-edge visual effects. We still prefer the suit, though. While there was an unofficial Godzilla game on the Commodore 64 in 1983, the improbably sized one's first licensed game appearance came a year later with Godzilla vs. Three Giant Monsters on the MSX. 
Interestingly, instead of trying to fend off Godzilla, players got to control him themselves, battling against the insectoid Megalodon, giant arachnid Kumonga, and three-headed dragon boy King Ghidorah in earth-shaking confrontations. Well, the developers tried to make the confrontations earth-shaking, but the graphical capabilities of the MSX, a 1983 home computer system by Microsoft, weren't quite up to the task. As a result, the gameplay amounts to Godzilla avoiding holes and trying to cough on the monsters that pop out of them. Ultimately, the kaiju on show are more adorable than intimidating. Good effort, though. Number 8. Greece and Greece. 32 years. Greece was a film that was released in 1978 and a tie-in game was released for the Wii in 2010. Hmm, what's that you say? Tell me more! Oh, go on then. The movie starred John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, and was a tale of high school summer romances based on a 1971 stage musical of the same name. Featuring many classic songs that are earworms to this day, Grease didn't really fit into the world of video gaming, until a certain console came along that drastically changed the medium's target audience, that is. So along came this music and party game released for the Wii in 2010. Gameplay primarily involved copying movements on screen as characters danced to songs from the films. Definitely not aimed at the hardcore gaming crowd, this one. Then again, I'm not sure the film was aimed at hardcore cinema fans either. Believe it or not, this wasn't the only Grease game, as Grease Dance was released for the Xbox 360 and PS3 a year later. It's basically the same thing, but with slightly nicer graphics. Honestly, these games are probably great if it's the sort of thing you like, but I think we'd rather play, well, any other game on this list, actually. Sorry, Grease, for the Nintendo Wii. You're just not the one that I want. Number 7, The Great Escape, and The Great Escape, 40 Years. A fixture of Christmas Day television and featuring cinema legends such as Steve McQueen and Charles Bronson, 1963's The Great Escape is perceived by many as an all-time classic. Based on real-life events, yet almost entirely historically inaccurate, the film told the bittersweet tale of a breakout attempt of a maximum security prison camp during World War II. It was a huge success at the time and grew in popularity as the years went on. The game adaptation hit shelves 40 years later in 2003. Released for PS2, Xbox and PC, it was a stealth action game that saw players take control of one of four characters from the film as the escape unfolds. It received middling reviews and would likely have been a long forgotten entry into what was a cluttered genre at the time were it not for the famous license. As with The Warriors, the game took the opportunity to expand on the film's lore. Certain missions take place before the events of the movie, or depict characters in new situations. It also dramatically changed the film's ending. All four playable characters managed to escape in the end, while only one of them got away in the film. Maybe they should have called it The Greater Escape. Number 6, From Russia With Love, and From Russia With Love, 42 years. Another film released in 1963 was From Russia With Love. This Sean Connery classic was only the second James Bond film, and it tells a tale of international intrigue and deceit, as criminal organisation Spectre attempts to assassinate the world's most famous super spy. Rated as one of the best Bond films, it was ripe for adaptation after GoldenEye's success, but it took until 2005 for a video game to surface. From Russia With Love for the PS2, GameCube and Xbox was a third-person shooter in which players got to step into the shoes of Connery's Bond, suavely blasting his way through locations from the film. Interestingly, Connery himself provided his voice acting skills for the game, making this the screen legend's last ever reprisal of his most famous role. Despite this historic significance, the game was not received particularly well. It was praised for its visuals and its challenge, but also criticised for bland missions and uninspiring vehicle sections that brought the whole thing down. I expected better from you, Mr. Bond. Number 5, Seven Samurai and Seven Samurai 20XX, 50 years. Akira Kurosawa's 1954 epic tells the story of a group of hardened samurai who are hired to defend a village from a bandit attack, as well as the intrigues and tragedies that ensue. Seven Samurai's premise is perhaps one of the most riffed on stories around, with countless movies and shows sending up the setup over the years. A full 50 years after the film's release, Seven Samurai's 20XX retells the movie's events in a futuristic setting, with mutated creatures and robots replacing the boring old bandits. 
In a possible case of overcomplicating a classic story, the villagers are after the samurai's protection because a child who provides balance to the world has been kidnapped. All of the village authorities are busy trying to get her back, leaving its inhabitants unprotected. The hack and slash combat was criticised by reviewers for its lack of depth, and the game was called out for its restrictive linearity and poor pacing. It seems that Seven Samurai's 20XX came nowhere near to living up to its legendary inspiration, and it definitely feels that like they fiddled with the formula too much. Was it really worth digging up a movie that was five decades old just to disappoint people with a lame adaptation? No. But as we'll see in a couple of entries, Seven Samurai 20XX isn't the only game guilty of doing that. Number 4. Fantasia and Fantasia – 51 Years if you remember watching Disney's Fantasia when it was originally released, well you must be looking forward to a telegram from the Queen in the next few years, and I'd like to congratulate you in advance. Also, you probably only remember the bit where Mickey Mouse puts on a robe and wizard's hat to chase animated broomsticks around. That's fine because it's the only memorable bit. The rest of the film is just classical music videos. Fantasia for the Mega Drive was released around the time that Disney was celebrating the 50th anniversary of the film, and it did a fine job at translating the movie's spectacle onto the 16-bit console. The game plays out similarly to Castle of Illusion, with players controlling Mickey as he jumps on enemies and collects missing music notes throughout the magical world. Unfortunately, it was nowhere near as well received as the more prominent outings of Mickey, Donald and friends during the 16-bit era. Despite having great visuals for the time, it was drastically held back by bland gameplay, dodgy collision detection, frustrating difficulty and clumsy controls. Maybe one of those animated broomsticks should have swept this one under the rug. Number 3 – The Wizard of Oz and The Wizard of Oz – 54 Years The Wizard of Oz is the oldest film on this entire list. Hugely influential, it introduced the world to such iconic concepts as magical ruby slippers, cowardly lions, and tornadoes being portals to other worlds. It was the first movie to be filmed in Technicolor, and it is endlessly referenced in all kinds of media to this day. Video game fans, though, had to wait until 1993 to go off to see The Wizard, in any official capacity at least. The SNES adaptation of The Wizard of Oz interprets the iconic movie as a brightly coloured side-scrolling platformer, with players able to take control of Dorothy, the Tin Man, the Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion as they attempt to locate the famous yet elusive magician. The levels are maze-like, with hidden areas and puzzles to contend with, and it got a pretty good reception at the time. Of course, its reputation has plummeted thanks to more recent reprisals, with modern sensibilities exposing the game's ponderous pace, clunky controls and frustrating level design. Seven Samurai 20 XX seems a bit better by comparison now, doesn't it? Number 2 – Pinocchio and Pinocchio – 56 Years like Fantasia, Disney's Pinocchio was released in 1940, but it places higher in this list because it took the popular, or is it popular, puppet boy until 1996 to stick his extendable wooden proboscis into the gaming industry. The movie is considered an all-time classic, and was the originator of the quintessential ballad that was Disney's When You Wish Upon a Star. It's quite a big deal. The Mega Drive, SNES and Game Boy adaptation didn't fare quite as well as their source material, landing a negative reception at the time, and failing to achieve the legendary status of its contemporary Disney platformers. Many of Pinocchio's environments lack detail, and reviewers pointed out stiff animations and rudimentary simplistic levels. Still, it does a decent job of presenting all the iconic moments of the film, from the donkey metamorphosis to the bit where everyone goes inside a whale, and the high-octane oceanic chase that ensues. That puppet sure went through a heck of a lot to become a real boy. Honestly, Pinocchio, it's not worth it. Some days, being a puppet sat on a shelf seems like a better deal. And number one, Vertigo. Alfred Hitchcock Vertigo. 63 years. Alfred Hitchcock's 1958 classic starred Jimmy Stewart as a traumatised former police detective suffering from vertigo, which is a full sense of rotational movement, and acrophobia, which is a fear of heights. In the movie, he reluctantly agrees to tail a woman whose husband says she's been acting strangely, and the ensuing drama and intrigue sees our poor protagonist end up in a lot of very high places. Funny how life works out sometimes, eh? The video game is called Alfred Hitchcock Vertigo, and it's an adventure game that was released for the PC in 2021. At 63 years, it boasts the longest gap between a video game tie-in and the movie it was based on, as far as we could tell in our research at least. Of course, the phrase based on might not apply as well as inspired by does. While the protagonist of Alfred Hitchcock Vertigo definitely suffers from vertigo as a result of a traumatic event, it's a car crash that caused his head to spin rather than seeing a fellow police officer fall to his death. 
The game boasts all of the twists, turns and intrigue you'd expect from the master of suspense, but just about everything else is sorely lacking in finesse, which means it's nowhere near up to Hitchcock's lofty standards. Still, it's at the top of this list, and that's got to count for something. A gap of 63 years is not an easy record to beat, and we have to wonder, will it ever be taken off the top spot? Hopefully, it will. It really doesn't like being up this high.